Hi. Good evening. Hi. Welcome to Living with the Dead. This is episode 20. Is it really? How exciting is this? Wow. Episode 20. Ooh, yay. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we deal with the good spirits in your lives. We talk about how it's not all about demons and dark spirits and things you have to chase out. What about the lovely spirits that follow you everywhere? And this is a very important day for me because this is the three year anniversary of my mom's death. Oh, wow. So three years ago today, my mom joined me in spirit about an hour after she passed. And um, she's been with me ever since. She's right here all the time. Hi. Hey, Mom. My mom's so, right here. Yay. Right here Hi. and everywhere. It works out conveniently that your mom's on the left side and mine's on the right. Because <laughs> they both funny? fit in the video. That's right. Isn't that great? they're like that. Because they both want to be in the video. Ah, and this is Belle, the 103-year-old Hi. Belle. Yes. Um, most of you. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Michael. Um, Hi. know who she is by now. But she was given to me uh, by a girl in Belgium who could not keep her because Belle made her sick and her little little toddler sick for like three years she saw me doing a seance on television on ghost adventures and said you can a seance with a doll a much more haunted doll peggy the doll and said you take her and she sent her to me awesome. um we got the negative spirit out right away because yep. really negative spirits are not fun they mess up your life um it's not like oh i get to have the excitement of it no they just mess no, up there's your no life. excitement there's just good ugh. ghosts are good bad ghosts get mm. rid of them right so of the dark. we got rid of the bad ghost, and inside is this beautiful little eight-ish, we think, year old eight-ish yeah. girl. Eight. And that's Belle. She's a little mischievous around the house. She fell in love with Sheena immediately. I love her. Because look at, they look just like alike. Really, they could be the same person. I can hardly tell them apart sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that doesn't mess up the camera and uh, doesn't make people's heartbeats go irregular. That's yeah. how you can tell it's me. That's right. And, and that's what she does. That's, mm -hmm. that's Belle. We just did a beautiful event with her we Friday did. night. Yes. Almost filled the theater. Yes. At the Lost Hat Ensemble. House Antiques Go Show number two. Yeah. Fantastic seance where messages came through for every single person. Yeah. That's a good seance. That is when a good seance. Everyone gets a message. And Belle was right behind our head like this. Ooh. And how about, uh, how about, uh, my, so my best friend, uh, L.A. Weiss, and her husband came because people bring their haunted objects. And she brought their haunted crystal skull, Zora. Yeah. And Zora kind of stole the show. Yeah, Zora was great. Zora has some charisma yeah. and love being in front of an audience. Oh my goodness! I didn't think we we're ever going to get him off the audience, yeah. off the off the stage. He loved being on that stage in front of people. Yes, he did. We had some really great objects. Oh my God, we got so some much. some vintage, antique, yes. you know, movie star. But oh my gosh, it was beautiful. When we said we had time for one more, and like twenty hands went up. Yeah. I thought, wow, so many people brought stuff this yeah. time. And it was so exciting. So basically what happens is we talk a little about us, we talk a little about Belle, and then we do a psychic mediumship gallery that includes, we'll read you, we'll read the spirits around you, or we will read your haunted objects. Yeah. And last time it was mostly personal readings. This time it was almost all people, uh, people with stuff. haunted objects. It yeah. was fantastic. From and then we do a VIP seance. Too. Yeah. And the seance was fantastic, and I'm just, I'm so thrilled with how it went. And we think we're back on May 3rd. We're just wanting to confirm the date. As soon as we know, the uh, Patty will put up the, uh, the the event page and the event bright so you can get tickets. And uh, we're thinking we're going to seriously sell this May one out. Yeah, we are. So you be there. If you're yes. in the L.A. area or planning to be in the beginning of May. Yes. We want, yes, we want to take Sheena. Yeah. And we're Patty well, and Sheena, by the way. And, and oh, yeah. In case you don't know who we are. I'm trying to tag you. Excuse my thumb <laughs> in the middle of the screen. There's a thumb. Okay. <laughs> and then um, if you are not in the LA area, or even if you are, uh, I do a weekly radio show called Haunted Playground, and tomorrow Patty's my guest, and we're doing a new format that I call Lightworkers Unite, which is where um, I get together with other uh, lightworkers, and we do free readings and healings and spiritual counseling and all around making you feel better. And Pat will be with me for two hours tomorrow from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Yes. Uh, uh, please come. If you want to get on the air with us, you can. People are, have already texted me. There were three texts when I got to Patty's house tonight. Wow, yeah. People from tomorrow. And I haven't even advertised it yet. They just remember from last week. Here's my phone number, 818 818- 437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. If you want to get on tomorrow's show or a future show, send me a text and I'll put you on the queue to get in line. But everybody's been talking about when is Patty coming back. Aww. So when Patty's coming back is tomorrow from 12 noon to 2 p.m. So if you want to get one from both of us, 
that's the time. And we'll be on Facebook Live, and we'll be live on LA Talk Radio for two hours, and that's how you get on the air with us. Also, if you want to come to the next Antique Show, um, feel free to, to, to text me, 818-437-0886, and, and, and we'll put you on the list and let you know when the next show is, because I don't care. I just give my cell out to everyone now. <laughs> It's written on bathroom walls across yes, the U.S. <laughs> yes, and it doesn't say for a good time. I can't tell you what it says, but it's, they kick us off the air if I told you. So uh, this is episode 20. Uh, we're at wearelivingwiththedead.com and at antiquesgoshow.com. Um, if you go to antiquesgoshow.com now, you'll see some information about our last show. And, um, of course, at pattynegri.com and at sheenametalspiritual.com. We love you getting to know us. We're making some wonderful friends. More, we always want more wonderful friends in, in the spiritual and paranormal world. We do. And this kid loves your attention. So she loves when you yeah. ask questions about her. She loves your emails. She loves your phone, call, your phone calls, your text messages. Uh, and she was so well behaved on Friday. She was really good. Oh, she was so she good. She was really the first one we did a couple yeah. months ago. Yeah, she did good, but she was a little hesitant. Yeah, her energy her little lot. her little uh, EMF bear. Well, it didn't work oh, this time either. She blows it up every time. But last time I thought the batteries had gone dead, which always happens with paranormal stuff and spirits. But I got home and I went lit up, lit up, lit up, lit up. So she had had a good time, but was really happy to be home. This time she was. Not less happy to be home, but she had really liked being at the theater. Now, what does it mean when the green light comes on? Because last time the green light came on, didn't come on all night till the seance, and then it was like fully on. That's her heart light, I think. I mean, I don't know how it was invented. Uh, it's electromagnetic field. It's like you see people with their EMF meters, but this is called a trigger object. It's really good to use with kid ghosts or little girl spirit ghosts. So that means when that went on, it meant there was activity around it. Yes. Maybe hers, maybe somebody else's, maybe both. Yeah. That was a hell of a seance. That was really, yeah. What, yeah. Wow. what I remember of it was really good. Um, I can tell you, it was um, a lot of, so there were, what, 11 of us at the table? And there were a lot of um, uh, really close people that had passed to almost every single person yeah. that came through with messages. I mean, um, yeah. somebody's ex-husband had just passed, Somebody, two people's ex-husbands, uh, somebody's dad was there. Somebody's mom was there. Um, uh, somebody that was at the table has a connection to an old um, Hollywood actress and that passed in, in the 30s, and she was there. Um, I mean, it was somebody's uh, uh, son was there that passed. Um, it was amazing. And then sometimes your spirit gives messages to people. It's not yeah, always yeah, dead yeah, loved ones. Yeah, it's, it's not always just... dead ones. We'll hear people giving things to whatever. I'm so glad you remember all this. Yeah. I'm sort of, it doesn't look like it, but I'm sort of in trance state because I open oh, sure. the mail. So it's yeah. like, what do we do? You know right. me, I just remember everything. I know, no, that's, that's what good. I do. That is good. I'm no, even so my weird. TV stuff, I watch it, it's like, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> it's like I get to experience again for the first time over and over and over again. That's good though, right? It is good. No, it yeah. is good. I have to go there. I have to go there the way for the my, my part of the thing. But we tag team really well Yeah, together. we do. We're a good pair. Both, whether we're on the radio doing our yeah. free readings like yes, we like will tomorrow. be tomorrow. Uh, on Haunted Playground. Um, call about anything. Doesn't have to be about haunted things. That, no, that's we'll not help anything. you with anything you want we're a good team and yeah. i think the most important thing is that we love each other so much and we both love bell so much yeah and i think that that because patty and i've talked because we've been friends for like 10 years yeah. that that as artists we were both artists first actors first and then many other things and then and then of course out about our psychic medium gifts that we didn't think we would do professionally now we both do yeah um that that there's so many people in this business that don't support each other and we're people that always go into it like, let's just be best friends forever. And then people are like, Ugh. so it's so <laughs> nice to have a friend that you can work with that isn't like all weird. Like I, I have so much love and respect for Patty and all I want to do with these shows and on this show is just pump her up and tell everybody how wonderful she and is. Spice up. And, and right, exactly. And that doesn't always happen. Sometimes people get jealous or what, how can you be friends if you're both like all have friends, uh, clients that'll say to me like, would you get mad if I called Patty? And I'm like, no, you should call Patty. There are no, things that, that, I, that are Patty's forte that she does that are not things that I do and vice versa. And so vice versa. Please call Patty. And I, again, and yeah, and again, and that's what a, a sense of abundance is. Yes. People who yes. hold on to their money and I don't have money. Yes. I'm never going to have money and hold on. <laughs> money is abundant and great. So the same thing, yes. I, I mean... I give any opportunity I can to my my fellows yes. that come up. I'm yes. not, this is mine, this is mine. Yeah. Um, because, I would rather you call more, Patty and because I more, trust her. More. Yes, I would. If, you, if you're in crisis and it's something that I can't help you with or you just want another person's opinion and guidance, 
I would rather turn you on to one of my people that I trust that I go to with my own personal problems like Patty, because I want to, I want people to, to go somewhere where they're safe. Cause my biggest concern with my clients and with the people who watch this show and who come to our live shows, Patty, I'm, I'm concerned with your heart and how you're, how you're nurturing your heart. Who's taking care of you. Who's taking care of your soul. So if I can turn you on to somebody that I love and respect like Patty, I know you're going to be safe. Because, right. you know, sometimes people go to, like, light workers and they get weird stuff. Like, oh, someone put a curse on you. Or they come back and they're sca- they're terrified. Yeah. And, and I don't do that. Anybody who's fear-based, anybody who tries yeah. to control you, run right. out the door. Ooh. Run. I'm actually, <laughs> though we're very little and not doing a lot right now, president of the American Federation of Certified Psychics and Mediums. And we put out all this stuff. Because, sadly, a lot of them are the street corner psychics with the, you know, the hand and the $25. I'm not saying all those are bad. But, you know, their whole goal isn't really to just help you or get you on your feet. It's to get your money. So you're saying I shouldn't put a a, a crystal ball on the roof of my car? Oh, oh no, that you should do. (laughs) And a big neon sign. Yes, a big hand. Like where where my emblem is on the front of the car. You just put a big hand. Yeah. Um, Well, I think it's like anything else, right? It's the doctor that you have a scratch and then they say you need a surgery. Yeah. It's you go to the mechanic to get a tire fix and then they tell you you need to have your transmission replaced. In this world, there are people that are takers and they're looking to sell you as much as they can sell you. And when you go see a psychic medium, you should use the same discernment that you would use when you went to a doctor or a mechanic or a vet. You should find somebody that you trust where you get something good for what you pay for yeah. and who isn't charging you an arm and a leg and scaring you into thinking you need all this stuff. Because yeah. you don't always need all that stuff. No, because my idea of a really good psychic, medium, light worker, intuitive, whatever you want, all the names, call us is somebody who gets you a little more independent, a little yes. more so you could help yourself and yes. understanding on things. So I'm not saying that you won't come see us, but that you are more empowered. It's about empowerment. Yes. Yeah. And the ones that take away your power say, you did this and you need that. That's scary. It's scary. It's like therapy. Like when you first go into therapy, you might go three times a week, four times a week. And then the idea is that as you get happier and healthier, that you can go less frequently or you can sometimes go a lot when you need help. Sometimes you don't need help. People always say, well, when do I need to come to you? And I always say, well, you come to me when you feel like you need me. When you feel like you don't need me, then that's the time that you shouldn't come to me. And that's okay, too. Um, The idea, like we said, our our perfect goal would be if all of our clients got so healthy and so happy that they hardly ever had to come see us or just for a check-in. And somebody will always need help. Right. There's (laughs) other people that are going to need help. We want you so healthy, so happy. Yeah, Yeah. That's what we do. We want you healthy and happy, folks. And we like Belle. I think Belle has become healthier and happier. She has. She's really not she's been such a good girl. Her mischievous. She has not even draining as much energy. Have yeah. you noticed that? Yeah, she's no. great. Because she doesn't do anything bad. But she no. because sometimes it she takes makes some, my heart rate go a little yeah. irregular. Well, uh, yeah, but yeah, but because she used to drain energy. Even when we got the bad spirit out, I had to keep herbs with her and all yeah. sorts of oils and things. But not in a long time. So she's learning her balance too, which is good. Yeah, that's important. I'm trying to find a place to put my head where my face doesn't look four times the size of Patty's. I don't think it does. I have a it's, big face. it's my hat. Your hat with a hat. My my face is bigger than Patty's with a hat. I can't see my face. It says, "Do you want to tag Sheena O'Metal in this Why video?" Why does it keep doing and that? And Kim Wynn Schrock says, "Hi, y'all," and somebody else saying hi. And I've we've seen. I'm noticing some really nice things. I haven't said hi to yeah, anybody right. but about somebody's uh, child in heaven's birthday is May first. Oh, sweet. happy yeah, birthday to your yeah, child in heaven! Birthday. And saying somebody saying Belle was in a really good space tonight. Yeah. Yes, she is because she loves this. Yeah, she is a ham bone. <laughs> Everybody send some prayers and say hi to my mama because uh, this is a rough day for me. Mm -hmm. I woke up this morning. I'm like, why do I feel so sad? I'm like, oh, that's right. It's mama's death anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's three eleven is such a a, a, an empowering sort of number series. Yeah, it's a it's a strange day for a death anniversary. I think. Yeah, but remember, she's just moved on. Yeah, she's She's just just living in a different place. Science proves nothing dies. Absolutely, and she certainly hasn't, and she's helped me so much in my work, and and you know, I've told you this, Patty, I couldn't do what I do now if it wasn't for her, her guiding me through all of this, and and certainly if it wasn't for my friends like you that have been so wonderful to, to mentor me through this new life. Did you have somebody mentor you through the new life? I've had many people mentor me, because again, I started very young, at like 13, Right. um, once I became the seeker. Um, I mean, I started three or four, my seances started at eight, right. but my seeker of studying religion and philosophy began at 13. But I've had some amazing, amazing teachers. Some have passed on and now they're my spirit teachers. Mm-hmm. 
um, in all sorts of different, uh, even cosmologies, belief systems. So again, I just throw them in one big cauldron and take I love the that. truth Me out too. of the middle. Yeah, I call it I spiritual think. salad bar. Yes, I do. You take what you want and you leave what you don't want. Like but there's them. a difference because I was a seeker from a very young age. But there's a difference in being a seeker and coming out and saying, I do this. Oh. And I know a lot of my clients and a lot of the folks that talk to us here on my radio shows, it's it's a different thing. It's one thing to seek your gifts. It's another thing to say, I have gifts to people that you know that don't know of you as that. Mm. That was harder for me than admitting that I had them. Right, right. And, and I'm going to tell you about it. And I can help you. And <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, Belle really holds her own in a crowd. Yes, she does. People love to come see her. I've had so many wonderful comments since Friday night. Everyone's like, I am in love with you guys. I'm in love with Belle. Um, how can I see more Belle? Where is there going to be more Belle? How can I go and see more Belle? I mean, Belle really just is a charmer. Pretty good looking for 103. Nice, almost 104. Great. She was uh -huh. almost blurring us out again. Maybe yep, because I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> He's a ham. Uh, every bell makes a little camera go in it. Every, yeah. every lie. Yeah, Belle does Belle do that. Belle does love the camera focused on her. Yeah. Uh, so she doesn't get blurred out. We get blurred out. It's very funny. Yeah, it is. Her little teeth are showing very big today. I saw something running at, in front of the... There's a, there's a set of uh, French doors right over... So like right here, if like on the other side of the camera. See my finger? Yeah. I'm talking with a finger puppet again. Um, and there was something out there. So there's lots of things kind of dance around Patty's house. And they're not allowed to come in because the house is so warded. Yeah. So explain to people what warded is. People warded don't know. is protection. However you do it. There's many ways to ward a house. But everything should be warded. Your personal body should be warded. Um, work Ward your within, body, people. Work within your truth, your belief system. Call in, if you work with angels, call in your angels. If you work with the Christ light, call in the Christ light. If you work with dragons, call in dragons. If you work elementally, call in the air, the fire, the water, the earth. All of the above, like I do. Everybody, come on, let's have a party. But but you do, and you need to claim your space as your own. Doesn't mean you have to own your home or your apartment. Uh, what 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 I get people to do that people in England do and not here is is claim your space. It's called beating the bounds. Walk around with a broom. Doesn't have to be a witch's broom. Hit the handle at the house. Walk around your house. And if you just have a like half of a bedroom in somebody else's house, walk around your half a bedroom. Hitting the, hitting the handle of the broom upside down, going, I claim this space as my own. Mm. Hit. I claim this space as my own. I claim this space as my own. You will feel it different. I was just, I can't talk about it, but I was just in Arizona doing an investigation and doing a clearing. And the first thing I had, um, the person who was having some issues with his house, is, is claim this land as his own. He had recently moved in and all sorts of stuff had happened. So I'm like, you haven't claimed your land. You haven't claimed your space. Again, even if you have, you know, this much space of your own, claim it. So you do every corner of every room. I don't even do corners. I walk around like I'm, I'm, oh. I'm stamping it every couple of feet. Okay. Um, a really great time to do it. Do it, well, in my house do it as soon as you know about it, and then do it every Halloween Eve, every Samhain Eve. Okay. Do it again on Samhain. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this space is my own. Because that's the time when we the veil is the thinnest and we do really celebrate the dead. Yeah. And again, claiming your space, beating the bounds. Yep. And I'm a big fan of white light. Oh, yeah. And it right. can be so simple. You can just say, I'm asking for protection from the white light. Uh, white light, please protect me from anything that uh, is negative, dark, or doesn't have my best interest at heart. And that's it. Yeah. You just... And just constantly say that. Constantly surround yourself in the white light. Some people like to say, I'm surrounding myself in white light. I like to ask for protection from the light. Because I think of the light as being more an active thing than just a thing you surround yourself in. Yeah. And I like to have respect for the universe and ask for the light to protect me. It works miracles. I grew up in a hideously haunted house. And my mom at one point, when you know nobody did this, staggered off to a crystal bookshop to try to figure out what the hell was going on in her house. And they gave her that protection. And as long as she and I both said that protection before we went to bed, we could pretty much keep that thing at bay. But in instances where she was out of the house having a surgery or I was out of the house having a surgery or one of us was sick and compromised uh, emotionally and, and uh, physically from being like the flu or something, then it would come back. So it really just is about your own strength 
and saying white light prayers. So I don't get freaked out when things dance around the outside of Patty's house because I know they're not coming in here. They're not coming in But sometimes in here. when I walk to the car, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> my goodness. you surround yourself with the light. And I surround I myself with the light. But Palo man, Santo on the way I tell out. you, Hollywood is a different place after 10 o'clock at night. It, it really is a place where the dead come out and dance. Well, this is, it's an it's old, beautiful area. My whole neighborhood is from the 1920s. This house is from the 1920s. Um, and it's got a lot of history. Just like walk into an antique store, walk into someplace really old. Yeah. Go someplace. I mean, in America, old is nothing compared to when you go to Europe and other countries. Right. But old is still old. Yeah. It's true. So. But it's very enchanted here. Yeah. Now, do you believe, because I talk about this sometimes on my radio shows, do you believe that the it's enchanted because of the entertainment business? Because I believe that the enchanted nature of Hollywood drew the entertainment business here. I completely do that because I have been there. There is a, you know, there, the earth has vortexes mm -hmm. or like, like belly buttons mm -hmm. of energy. And ley lines. Mm -hmm. And there's, and ley lines. There is a vortex or a portal in Griffith Park, not too far from the Hollywood sign, a little deeper, actually halfway in between Hollywood and Burbank, the two entertainment capitals. It's not marked. Of course that's where it is. Of course that's where it is. Every time I've been there, they'll, they'll be, Nuns reading the Bible or praying, lovers kissing. Again, really? that saying, yes, and it's it's not marked. People are just drawn there, and I honestly believe that that is why Hollywood is where it is, not thirty miles this way or thirty sure. miles that sure. way. And we're not just it's not just the artists, the actors, the writers, the dreamers, the musicians. We have the spiritual here, right in this neighborhood. We've got Vedanta Society, we've got Theosophy, we've got a monastery of Catholic nuns, we've got about eight different spiritual things here in the Hollywood Hills, mm -hmm. which so it, it's that same right brain side of things, whether mm -hmm. you're a, a musician or a, a nun. We've got the Masonic Lodge. We've got, yes, we've got that here. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's an intensely energy charged place if you've ever been there. Yeah. In Beechwood Canyon, right? Yep, yeah. And wow. Two minutes from here. That place is so insanely cool. I think Hollywood brought in the artists, the I dreamers, the spiritual. Yep, it drew everybody here. Because it knew that there was something magical that it wanted to happen here. People just go, no, it was the weather. I'm like, you know, <laughs> there's nice weather in pretty much the same San weather. San Diego. In Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Vegas. None of those places are this. Yeah. It really was just the distinct energy here that drew the arts community here. Yeah. And, and, and it all and, happened here in Hollywood, yeah, right? And right. so the energy here, there's so much energy of, of folks who've passed. There's so much energy of... Of um of uh you know hopeful people who came here with hopes and dreams yeah. who a friend of mine used to live in the Hollywood Tower mm, and, my oh, favorite building oh my god is... we would do seances in there and it was so intense and then um sometimes when I was um she was out of town I would babysit her cats I'd go feed her cats at night and that was when I was booking music so I'd get off at like one o'clock in the morning and wherever my club was I would drive over to the tower and park in the temporary spot and walk in and feed her cats and you'd walk in that place and there'd be like 1920s music like when well, they sang like oh and then you're like okay it's haunted and the music's from the 20s and it's like a time warp it is. and I would go to her apartment and feed those cats and I would be like who am I and what era is it and what is happening? You know that, yeah, I have done for the, not this year, but for four Halloweens, they bring me in to do ghost tours on Halloween for their tenants. It's I such bet. a cool apartment building. Yeah, it's awesome. I've done se several seances in their gym is really haunted. Mm -hmm. We have one wing of the Hollywood Tower, the old building. They built a yes. beautiful new building. Yeah, she's in the old building. They have a kissing ghost. There's a bath oh, running wow. and kissing ghost. He runs baths for people. We've got so much activity. The That's elevator so cool. in the Hollywood Tower is actually what Disneyland yeah. designed the, yes. the the elevator in the yes, Tower of Terror. Tower of Terror from the Hollywood Tower. Wow. And there it's got a crazy past like from gangsters throwing mm -hmm. people over the thing and good and bad. Isn't and the legend that people disappeared? It was it New Year's Eve or Halloween Eve? I don't know. In that elevator. Yeah, maybe. That's where the, that's the, that's yeah. the, the legend. See, I never look things up, the legends beforehand, so or, or never, because I just want to get it. I think that's the legend, that people got in the elevator and then something happened. There was a flash of lightning or something. Wow. And then when the elevator opened, they were gone. Yeah, they have a beautiful Don't quote room. me, though, because I've been known to get a story wrong, like I did about Bell's Mel's chair. rocking chair, that <laughs> I said fire. survived she a childhood a fire and it didn't survive a fire. So. And was like the guy who gave it to us, like really? There was a fire Where'd in my house. I felt like such an ass. Everybody, I swear that's what I heard. But I do know that there is a story with 
a mysterious thing happening where folks yeah. disappeared from that elevator. Yeah. And, and again, it's a beautifully, beautifully haunted building. We get so much yeah. evidence there. And again, they just kept bringing me back every year. Yeah. I did something uh, last Halloween. Yeah, not this Halloween because I was in Vegas. Last Halloween on it. It was great. I did a play seven years ago at the Stella Adler Theater, which, by the way, is haunted. It's up over the Hollywood Wax Museum, which, by the way, is it's haunted. haunted. And um, everybody was like, oh, well, you know where the cheap parking is? You park in the Hollywood Highland Center. And then it's only $5. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll park for $5. So I park in the Hollywood Highland Center. I get out. And you have to walk up through the center and then down to the corner and then halfway through the last block. And then that's where the Stella is. So I'm walking and I'm like, oh, this is lovely. And what a nice walk. And it feels good to walk. Well, then rehearsal gets out at like 11 o'clock at night. And I have to walk back. Well, after 10 o'clock, Hollywood Boulevard is a totally different place. And suddenly... The ghosts are all out. I mean, they're on the streets. They're hanging out in front of the of, of uh, the Chinese. They're they're in the Hollywood Highland Center, and that was one of the most bizarre walks of my life. <laughs> so then the next night I parked behind the theater for fifteen dollars because it's <laughs> it's a lot of spirits. And when you're doing a play, when you're in Tech Week for a play, you're very vulnerable because you're living between the place of your life and where that character lives. So to be in that vulnerable spot and then be in that vulnerable place where you can literally feel the ghost walking up and down Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. We've got some beautifully haunted places. Yeah. We've got, of course, the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. Yes. Like Hollywood Forever and any cemetery, yes. but that's a good one. Hollywood Athletic Club. Uh-huh. A big, great ghost. Yeah. The American Legion Hall. Yeah. I've filmed in almost all yeah. of them. The Hollywood Magic Tower, Castle. Magic Castle. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've figured out, that big in life, big in death. Uh, spirits. If you have a big personality... In, when you're alive, like movie stars, yep. musical stars, yep. writers, producers, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. You're going to be big. If, if you were a banker in Poughkeepsie or someplace little, <laughs> you're going to still be a fine ghost, but you're going to be the quiet get banker ghost. These are people who came to Hollywood and make it big. So we have big ghosts here at yes. our Roosevelt's and um, American Legions where everybody hung out and they come to hang out again. So... You come to Hollywood, we'll give you a tour. We should do that. Yeah. We should do a really so good ghosty tour. We're and working there, oh, on an idea for a tour, and I pitched it to somebody just last night. Yeah. So I have to pitch it to, uh, my friend is a tour guide, and he's a driver. And so I said to him last night, if I could pitch this to your boss, would you drive? And he said, absolutely, I'll, I'll drive. Yeah. But I, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do a Living with the Dead tour? Yes. Where, you know, maybe a couple, three times a year, we took people on a Hollywood, um, haunted Hollywood tour yeah. and point out all the locations. Yeah. Because so many of the haunted tours are walking. Yeah. You can only go so many places when you do a walking tour. But if you're right. in a van, you could really cover Hollywood. Yeah, you could really cover. Have all the places, even yeah. go up to the Hollywood sign. Right. I mean, you could kit everything. Right. And, and, and even some that do have a draw with the, the driving, they're not run by intuitives or psychic right, mediums. Right. Right. Okay, there's a ghost right over yeah. here. Let's let's raise the veil and talk to it. And Here's they don't <laughs> have a hundred and almost four year old possessed doll. Ooh, she drives. No. Yep. She come with us on the van and yeah. you get to get your pictures taken with her. I swear more picture walk by pictures taken with her than with I us. Know, it's they all do. about her. And that's okay. And we love yeah. that though, because it's just like she's our child and we're so yeah. proud of her. Yes. We love that people love Modern her so family. Much. Yes, uh, yes, exactly. Just the two of us. And yeah. uh, yes. And what do I call it? Um uh, uh two psychic ladies and a haunted baby. It's like three men and a baby, but yeah. yeah. That's my thing. It's a weird thing. Um, but yeah, I think we should start working on that tour because I think it would be so much I think, fun. I think so too. I think it would be really good. And it would be a fun thing for those of you that aren't in LA that you could plan a destination for when you're out of when town. And even I hope at some point, because this is how I think, I'm an Aries and we think huge, it would be fun if we could set something up, Patty, where it was like a Living with the Dead weekend. Yeah. Where there was an Antiques Go show, there was seance, the haunted tour, tour, there was the seance. A mediumship gallery. A mediumship gallery. We did um, workshops. We could, right, both we of us could teach a workshop, and we could take a weekend, and you could do all of that stuff. So the tour could be one night, the Antique Sco Show could be one night, the seance, the psychic mediumship gallery could be one night, and then um, haunted weekend in Hollywood. Haunted weekend in Hollywood, and you all could come out and see us and spend time with us. Who would be up for that? You guys yes. up for that? Yeah. And maybe we could even do a, you know, like a get together dinner at the Roosevelt, mm -hmm. where everybody could come and we could hang out at the Roosevelt and do something and eat and, you know, something fun so that you could see a lot of these wonderful places. Maybe I could even get 
uh, everybody some passes to go to the Magic Castle for something. Yeah. And it would be fun to just actually be in these locations. There's also a wonderful place called the Hollywood Museum that's the old Max Factor building. Yes. And it's very haunted. And the owner's been on my radio show, and she's she's had Max Factor's ghost in her office. Really? She has well, his that's office. Cool. Okay. And she has his desk and his safe wow. in her office. That's good. So there's ghosts in there, because that's where a lot of actresses were made to look, and actors were made to look the way that we saw them in old Hollywood. That's where they went and got their makeovers was right. at the Max Factor building. So, yeah, I think it'd be fun. I think we should start working okay. on that. We'll start working on it. Yeah, okay, the we're there. Weekend. Hi, Todd. Hi, Fiona. Hi, Clint. Oh, my God. Everybody's Hi, here Hi, Fiona. Tonight. How that are so you? Awesome. How weird that we have Fiona in common. Yeah. We have so many people in I common so that we didn't even know. Common. Yeah. We and I saw you know. go by, Todd. I was going to call you today. Hi, Todd. <laughs> and Wenzel. There's Wenzel. Where is her rocking chair? The one that burned yes. up in a fire? Wenzel, we're so sorry that when you were a child, your house burned down. And the only thing that didn't burn was the unburnt rocking chair. Her chair is actually over by the fireplace, but we did have her chair on stage Friday night, center stage at at um, at the theater in a like sold out house. Yeah. So your chair is doing really well, Wenzel. But I do have to tell you, Wenzel, that even though we now know that story is not true, when someday we get the big movie deal for the story of Belle, I can't guarantee we're going to go that, back to the fire. I at can't Wenzel's guarantee house that, that that story the, won't open the movie. <laughs> the black, and then we find out it's fake. Yeah. I mean, it's not a real story. Yeah, because, you know, we take we take creative license when a movie's yeah. made. And that is a fantastic story. With, uh, yeah, yes. She loves that rocking chair. And it's she, the star. It is. It really. Oh, I, have, I, took, I haven't posted them yet. Some kind of eerie pictures in the back of my car. I brought oh, them. And yeah, she was looking out the window. Pretty. And she was lit up. It was, and she yeah. started to do that eye roll back thing. Yeah. yeah. And I was worried because she's I not in a car worry. seat. And you I know can't how read what Freddie's saying. Interested in doing seance with Patty and Earl? Yes, she has some seances. Yes, yes. It's closer for some uh, for us in the family, but yes, yeah, yeah. We'll do it. We'll find out. Well, she's a seance. She's a seance. She's a lot of seance. She's a lot of seance. She's a lot of seance. She's a seance. <laughs> and Freddie, haven't seen you in a while. I've been here uh, at seances at Patty's. Oh yeah, many. Yeah, that's where I learned to do a seance. That's uh, I I I I because I was fearful of seances because um, as a matter of fact when we used to do the seances at the Hollywood Tower I would never actually be in the seance I would sit off to the side and just protect things because I grew up in that creepy house and I didn't want to be in a seance right. I didn't want to be near a Ouija board until I was around Patty and Patty's so good at what she does and I feel so safe oh. that I feel like I can participate in a seance and that some evil thing isn't going to follow me home and eat my gizzard yeah because you know that's a concern for me. Yeah. Because you, you need your gizzards. I need my gizzard to be we uneaten. Need our <laughs> because I grew up in a creepy house where, you know, you couldn't get away from it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that broom handle and just be worrying yeah, the living hell out of my house. This is my house. space. This is my space. This is my space. This is my space. But yeah, I don't know what we were talking about before that. Before, before we went to the Sheena and the Shayans. Shayans. Uh, is I it wrong like to collect crosses that were in a house fire? No, there's no. no wrong. I mean, unless you think it's wrong, then it's no. wrong. But uh -uh. What, to collect, say, uh, yeah. no. 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 Why? I don't know where these little blue... See, she's not keeping her head up today, Belle. How? I'm sorry. She gets I keep... bored and we're not talking about I, her. I know. House fires aren't necessarily like something dark. I mean, something can survive a fire and it can have... It can have all the energy of the people that live there, and that's and the a beautiful fire thing. fire energy, too. A fire is a powerful thing. It yeah. can well as burn things up. It can mold things. Yeah. I work with fire energy all the time. I work with dragon energy, which is crossroads and fire energy, and it's beautiful light. I love crosses. I mean, I'm certainly not anybody that you would consider, like, a hardcore Christian in, ever in my life. But I have a big, beautiful wood cross that's got metal on it. I keep it in the trunk of my car in case I'm doing some paranormal investigating and stuff gets negative. You just take your cross with you. I also may have, may or may not have, a uh, an old Pepsi one liter bottle filled with holy water. <laughs> that might be in my car. Okay. And also some uh, some rods, some That's divination it. rods. The only thing in my car is an emergency Ouija board, which I used Friday night because I realized oh, I didn't bring right. my damn my face. I wondered like, that was a cute little Ouija board. I know. Like, it's my, it's my emergency Ouija board because in the getting nice. home, I literally flew in to do our show. From yes. Arizona. Poor thing, I hadn't slept. I hadn't slept. In, I, we, we worked all night and I hadn't slept and I got there and I don't have my Ouija board, but I have my emergency Ouija board in my car. Yay. Yay. 
And I keep uh, that those three things, and then I also have a little kit that I take everywhere with me that has um, a little a mini uh, tarot deck. It has um, some uh, angel cards, yeah. and then it has a little bundle of sage and a couple things of incense and a rosary and my hematite pendulum. And then all my favorite little tiny stones. Like it's got oh. an amethyst and a rose quartz and a quartz and a malachite. I just like to have all that stuff with me because you never know when you're going to be somewhere. And then somebody's going to say, oh my God, I think there might be a spirit here. And I'm like, oh, I have stuff in my car. Yeah, see, right here, a little emergency kit. You know what I'm keeping in my car now? Those two beautiful things you gave me. They're like crystal. Oh, yes. Those decided they both had to be hang over my, and they've just brought so much magic. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. I haven't had them like in a month now. I think. I'm so glad. They're, they're, um, they're uh, what does she call them? One of my radio listeners made them for me. Love bombs, she calls yeah, them. love bombs. They're like sun catchers. Yeah, they're and great. They have I'm they're so glad that's what you did with them. Yes. And they're my car protectors. It's good. Bell, would you keep your head up? She's like, you guys are boring. Because we're I not know. talking we about, talk Bell's about Bell's wonderful. Or haunted Bell's thing. fantastic. Does anybody there More have stuff a haunted about object? Bell. Yeah, anybody yeah. have a haunted object that they'd like to bring to a future Antiques Go show? Or even show us here. I don't know if you could show us here. And is anybody watching, uh, has anybody watching actually been on uh, Antiques Go show? I've been to the Antiques Go show shows and, uh, and been somebody whose item that we read? Haunted item... Not that we could read everybody, because we're trying. It's really hard. It goes. I couldn't. I, be, I think the first one we did in January, people were a little shy to bring objects. Yeah. We had some great ones, but we didn't have a lot. Right. I think people didn't know what it was. And this time, man, everybody was like, tons of people brought stuff. It's very cool. And even uh, the next day, I got a three or four calls from folks that were like, you didn't read my object. Can I bring it next time? Yes. And I said, yeah. Yes. And absolutely. we'll let them up first. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you brought stuff before, obviously you don't get to come up first. But you certainly can come. And you can always be part of the seance if you get a VIP ticket. Mm. So the seance is going to grow. Yeah. Yeah. The seance is going to grow. And point. if you don't have a VIP ticket, you can still watch the seance. Yes. We kick the nobody out. We you can stay and watch out. it. No. You just don't get to be up at the main table. Great to have all of your energy there. And then we'd love to hear your stories afterwards of what you saw at the seance. That's super important and super amazing because, um, but you know, sometimes you do a seance and nothing happens. Even Patty, as amazing as she is, uh, sometimes nothing comes. Nobody wants to come to the party. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. So when, when you get, I'm going to say this again, Patty, because I can't get over it. When you get a message for every single person at the table, that's an amazing thing. And even some message came in that was kind of for me, and Patty's like, you have to wait. And I'm like, I know. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want we it. You can get your messages anytime. I don't want it. I don't want it. But uh, I do have an, an aunt with a very, uh, I won't say it here, but with a very interesting name that you don't normally hear. Oh, yeah. I remember. And I go, who's that for? Who's that for? And that for? was a weird thing to suddenly have yelled out. So I have to check in and make sure that she's okay. Yeah. And we can do that anytime. Yeah. But sure I know. Was, I do. I'm sure that I, was my mom. Like, hey, what about? that? Because my mom's always showing up and giving yeah. out tidbits. Yeah. I know. And it's so funny because I so, spend so much time on the other side. But I, I don't want my piece. I go away. Go away. You can't. I no, know. I'm not right. I know. It's like, it's, yeah, it's like. But I think yeah. it's important to validate that you know who it might be for. Yes, even no, no. I'm glad so that, that you So that everybody at the table isn't like, well, I don't know what that is. And could that be something I don't get? And just go, no, 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 it's for me. Yeah. It's all right. No, no, on. no. I'm glad we did that. Yeah. And had we had more time. Hi, Belle. Hi, sweet girl. She's wiggly tonight. That's okay. So she wants to put her hand wiggly, on my shoulder. Wiggly, 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 wiggly. Such a Have good baby. Have you ever messaged Everyone had messages on Friday. That was, we don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, everyone had messages on Friday. How do you feel about saging? Okay, I'm going to give you my thoughts on sage. Yeah. Sage is great, but it's harsh. It's it's almost too harsh. I prefer Palo Santo. Sage gets rid of everything, the good and the bad. Palo Santo just gets rid of the bad. If you do sage, if you feel the need to sage, which I use it once a year if I need to, um, after you sage, make sure you do counterclockwise on the sage. Everything you get rid of, you do starwise, counterclockwise. And then fill the room back up. Because otherwise, it's literally like, it's like dusting your house and then leaving the doors and windows open in a sandstorm. It's like a vinegar sage. douche for spirits. Ew! Yes, right? it is. It's it a vinegar is. douche for spirits. It's Who like wants that? Nobody wants that. So if you do sage, do it <laughs> counterclockwise. And then light 
a sweet incense, something angelic, something holy, a frankincense, myrrh, go clockwise and fill the space up with love, with light, with abundance, with anything. Light a white candle, go through, bring in some sound. And then sage is okay. It's just, it definitely is a two-step project. Right. Because everybody goes, oh, I sage, it felt so good. And why is it icky again? Because you didn't no. fill it back up and you've left an empty hole. Yeah. You'll bring back some something different, something worth, sort of the same thing back. Yeah, I li I'm, I like sage, but I like to um, I like sage mixed with lavender. Yeah, sage mixed with lavender, and, or I like to do sage and then burn some lavender oil yeah. afterwards. Yeah, but I'm a big fan of lavender. I think lavender is a wonderful uh, wonderful thing to clear a palate. It is. Um, I like to burn it. I like to um, I like to burn sticks that are lavender. I like to have oils. I like to diffuse yeah. oils. I, I use a lot I of lavender. lavender. I use a lot of this weekend lavender. So yes, um, I think lavender sort of. Um, People forget about it. People go, I don't like lavender. It smells like an old lady in the 1800s. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that's why I, I like, like it. Because yeah, I, I think I was a lady in the 1800s. But I also like it because um, I just like the gentleness that it brings. Sage is like harsh. And then it's sort of like um, sage is like when you have a deep cleaning crew come in and use industrial products and clean everything yes. in your house. And then the lavender is like the candles that you burn afterwards to soften it after right. they've come right. in with the lemon pledge and really scrub the place down. I mean, right. you know, you, I, I just, I'm a big, a huge fan. I'm also a big fan of cinnamon. I, yeah, I work with a lot of cinnamon. That's a fire. It's hot. You're going to bring in some fire, but I love Woo! cinnamon. Good for passion, good for yeah. love, good for cleansing. I use, I use cinnamon oil a lot and cinnamon in powder form and in stick form for a lot of spell working. Yeah. I, I use a lot of cinnamon for um, when I do my full moon and new moon prayers. I do prayer ceremonies. People leave their prayers for me on Facebook, and I do them every two weeks. And I, I love to use, because to me, there's something very vibrational raising yes. and exhilarating about cinnamon. And because um, I'm all about raising the vibration, there's something about cinnamon that to me that makes me feel like, um, like you just took a fresh breath of ocean air in. To it's me, it so makes sweet. me a little high. I like it. Yeah, yeah I like cinnamon. It makes me high. But when I walk in stores, because so I, I, you know, I'm a crystal shop whore, I'll walk into metaphysical centers and I'm like, oh my God, what are you burning? It smells so good. And nine times out of ten, they're like, it's just cinnamon. But to me, it's like, I think it must be some exotic, wonderful yeah, thing. No, it's great. Even real and non spiritual at all, real estate people, I put big cinnamon or burn cinnamon to make a house feel homey because it's like, oh, I'm cooking cinnamon apple pie or something. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm going to start cooking with cinnamon. I mean, I, I take a cinnamon supplement and I put cinnamon in dessert things, but I'm going to start cooking. I almost put cinnamon in my chicken today, but I use clove instead. Clove's another thing that I, I love the energy. The cl Clove has a cleansing yeah, energy yes, to it, it too. Yes, it does. Um, my, uh, my new favorite thing is... I. This is what I have for breakfast every day. We've never talked food before. But oh, let's talk food. food. Okay. Yes. I, I cut up an apple. I sprinkle cinnamon on it. Nice. I Well, I nuke it. I know a lot of people don't like microwaves, but I still use them. I nuke it for a minute, and it's like you have apple pie, but yep. there's no, no sugar, sugar. There's no anything. Yep. It's been my breakfast now for a couple of months, and yep. I absolutely adore it. Yes. You know whatever is uh, also is amazing? You take fruit, right? And you pour a little half and half in there and put some cinnamon and some clove and some nutmeg. Mm. And it's like you have a dessert. Yeah. You don't even know you don't have a dessert. Yeah. So when I go to a restaurant, I'm like, do you just have fruit? They're like, yeah, do you want whipped cream? I'm like, no, can I just have a little cream? They're like, you know, the cream doesn't have any sugar. I'm like, I don't need the sugar. Because once you fruit cleanse your palate off the sugar, just the, the sugars in the milk and the sugars in the fruit, you literally think that you're having like a, like a, you know, like a, like a, an apple brown Betty. And it's, I just said apple brown Betty, apple like I'm brown. 75 years old. Here, <laughs> apple brown Betty. Apple she brown don't like to say on. She don't apple like to say on. All right, She's so while we're talking about food, let me do mine. So okay. I cook with spices. Mm. And I think that when you ingest a spice, it's like burning it because you're burning it in your system. Because basically when you eat, your system yes. burns food. So um, I cook with a lot of black pepper, a lot of garlic, a lot of paprika, um, mustard seed, um, and then all the things that make curry, cumin, coriander, turmeric, uh, they're so sometimes good for you. there is something in it that if, so if I make like a four chicken breasts and then I cook them all in the stuff and I pour, my friend is a caterer and she said, you pour water in and you make a guru. And I'm like, Oh, 
So I make a roux first with the spices because I'm such a baby witch. Then I put the chicken in or the salmon. I make it with salmon. It's amazing. I let it sit in there and cook on a low heat so the spices really sink mm. in. And then I make enough to eat like the next three or four days. Yeah. And after I eat that, a couple bites of that, I feel high as a kite for two days. Like I feel like it's the best day of my life. And I really believe that the if you go and you and you check out on the online the the um, energetic properties of spices, and you cook with the ones for the things you want in your life. So most of those spices I mentioned are great for protection, um, for awareness, for um, vibrational uplift, for um, for cleansing, and I think it really has cleaned my body out. Yeah, in this beautiful way, it's spiritually, totally does. and food too, not just the yes, spices. Yes, and food too, and food too. That and food. There's some foods increase your psychic ability. Some yep. foods dull it, and mm -hmm. some are healthy foods that dull it. But that's yep. all easy to learn. Yep. That's actually what got me on Master Chef. It was not my cooking skills. Oh. I beat seventy thousand people to get on to cook for Gordon Ramsay as ma with magical cooking. I. I think to, to get on the show, I mean, five months of auditions, I did, I created um, I of Newt pumpkin soup. Oh. <laughs> Vegan I of Newt pumpkin soup, but it was pretty great. And then for my, my dish for him and Joe was um, Aristos' Son of Apollo love pasta, which I made a whole mandala with basil leaves and lemon. But nice. I, my whole gig or almost gimmick, which was a gimmick because I'm not a good cook. I kept going, any second they are going to figure out I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. And, and it just kept going on and on. Um, but, you know, even if you're, if you're stirring your oatmeal for your kids or your coffee in the morning, put love into it. Yeah. And again, if you want to add into your life with anything, go clockwise. Like I need more energy, stir your tea, stir your coffee clockwise. If you want to get rid of anxiety, you want to get rid of angst, go counterclockwise. I am letting go of worry. I am letting go. It works. This is just literally like tapping into gravity, tapping into to nature. It, it, it doesn't even have to be woo woo. It's just this thing that we've just forgotten over the, the tapping centuries. Tapping into the everything. We're all connected to the everything. Yeah. And the more we tap into the everything, the more connected we become. Yeah. So any way that you can connect to to the earth, to another living thing, to um, you want to you want to clear yourself spiritually, lay down with your cat for an hour, kiss your dog for an hour, take a walk for an hour, call someone you love and tell them you love them. I mean, all of these things are just as good as sage. You strengthen your vibration, and that protects you. The the, the elevated vibration protects you. Yeah. Hug and a you, tree. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, hug a tree. Hug people you love. Yeah. Smile at people when you go places. All of these things make you stronger. People that are really affected, oftentimes in haunted houses, um, or affected by paranormal, you know, possessed objects, are people who are not taking care of their spiritual immune system. You have to take care of your spiritual immune system and your emotional immune system the same way you would take care of your physiological immune system. Because mm -hmm. guess what, folks? We have three immune systems, and they all need to be nurtured. Just like you wouldn't not sleep for five days and drink nothing but alcohol and then throw up for five days and expect to be able to go do you take your SATs and do well. <laughs> Along the same lines... And I know many college students who have done... Exactly. That exactly. <laughs> you need to get... The same way that people always tell you you need to sleep, you need to walk, you need to oxygenate your system by getting your heart rate up a little bit. Guess what? You also need to protect yourself um, through taking care of yourself, through loving people through eating right. I mean, all of those things are so good for you spiritually. Yeah. And it really has changed my life. And also, I cut out chemicals in food. Yeah. Not a fan. Not a fan of chemicals in food. Yeah. I should start cooking with sage. Why yeah. I cook? no, I'm such no, a fan of sage. sage is great. Why yeah. aren't I cooking with... So my new and thing is... And I do is, use sage oil a lot. but Yeah, I do too, but I, I don't cook with it enough. I need to do more of that. I even got a kitchen cauldron. Really? Just to burn yeah. kitchen spices in the kitchen. Good. To do like kitchen ceremonies and stuff. Just because... I like the way, because I noticed that after I cooked the chicken or the salmon or the scallops or whatever, the whole energy in my house was different mm -hmm. from those spices burning in there for an hour. So I got a baby kitchen cauldron Perfect. just for kitchen spices. Yay. Yay. So many options. So many things. Anyway, so how you doing, Belle? How all you doing, right. Belle? Um, again, thank you all for being here. We love you. We will be back in two weeks. We're doing this every two weeks now on Monday. Yep, 9 o'clock Pacific if, time. Um... Uh, visit us online at all those places she said antigoshow.com we are living with the dead.com pattynegri.com spiritual.com sign up for my newsletter i send out little magical things once a month that's it i have a newsletter too and um 
And then if you're in LA in the beginning of May, maybe May, May 3rd, 3rd, we think. May 3rd. Uh, we'll confirm that in the next couple of days. We'll yeah. be at the Loft Ensemble Theater right. for the next Antiques Go Show. And uh, I'm also the founder of RaisingTheVibration.org. Mm -hmm. And this Sunday, from 11 yes. a.m. to 2.30 p.m., we're doing a gathering. My special guest is the wonderful Dee Wallace, who's one of the first people I knew that combined acting and her spirituality. And she's such a pioneer for that. Patty's going to be doing a wonderful ceremony to open up the day. So she's my special, special guest. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be, let me know you're coming. Text me, 818-437-0886. Email me, Sheena at sign, I am raising your vibration.com. And I'll set you up with some tickets to come and reserve your seats. It's a beautiful day. We have a little reception afterwards. You can make a new friend. It's all about peace, love, kindness, unity, and raising the vibration. I'll be speaking. I'll be interviewing Dee. We'll be taking your questions. You can just stand up and say how you're feeling about living in the world right now. It's all about connection. Please come to that. It's really beautiful. And then her whole you. vibration is really thank beautiful. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah. And then May 3rd is Antiques Go Show. And uh, we're here every other Monday. You can go to wearelivingwiththedead.com. And right now that forwards to our Facebook page. Or if you're on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash we live with the dead. Um, and also if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Sheena Metal, we have all the past episodes up there, including the outtakes which we didn't have to do an outtake tonight because somebody was such a good girl. She was being very good. Such a good girl. So She didn't turn off the camera. She didn't flip it around. She didn't do anything. A little yeah. in and out when she got little, bored. Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think this episode will be called Bell Falls Asleep when we're not talking about her. Yes, that could be. Because uh, her head I noticed when we're down. not talking about her, she's like... Her head goes down. <laughs> and then she's out. Yeah. Well, thank you guys all. We appreciate you. We love you. We love you. And uh, have a good night. We'll see you next time. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.